Hello, welcome people. In this video, we want to look at rifampin, rifampicin. Okay, anything you can say rifampin or rifampicin. R, it's represented as R. It is actually uh, the first line anti-TB drug. So, you know HRZT, right? In HRZT, R stands for rifampin. So, HRZT is a combination is given for tuberculosis patient. And how much R will you give? Fifth, uh, 10 mg per day. Okay, max 600 mg per day. So this is per kg. 10 mg per kg. Max 600 mg per day. Okay. So do you know exactly where we are? We are uh, studying anti-tubicular drugs. Okay. So you can see here in anti-tubicular drugs, the first line of drugs, isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, streptomycin, rifampin is here. Okay. Then... So usually HRZD is the combination given and you can see rifampin should be given 10 mg per kg. Maximum daily dose is 600 mg. Okay. Look at the treatment regimens for new patients and previously treated patients. New patient you should give HRZD for 2 months, HRE for 4 months. So total duration is 6 months. Okay. So rifampin will be there in all the 6 months. For uh, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, they are not giving rifampin. They are giving all the second line of treatment. This also, if you want, you can note. Okay. So basically, in this video, we are trying to look at rifampin in details. It kills intracellular and extracellular bacilli just like uh, isoniazid. But this also kills uh, spritters, that is inside the caseous lesions, whatever bacteria is trapped, even that it can kill. So rifampin is really effective guys. It acts on all type of bacilli subpopulations, hence it is called a sterilizing agent. Which is sterilizing agent? The rifampin. Now let's move on to the mechanism of action of rifampin. It binds to the, uh, whatever, finally it inhibits RNA synthesis, okay. It interrupts RNA synthesis by binding to the beta subunit of the mycobacterial DNA dependent RNA polymerase okay and it blocks its polymerizing function so it inhibits RNA synthesis by binding and inhibiting this RNA polymerase okay so it actually binds to the bacterial polymerase RNA polymerase not to others so it will not affect us much Rifampicin actually has a bactericidal effect. It will kill the mycobacteria. It can kill other bacteria also like uh, Neisseria, meningitis, Haemophilus, Influenzae, Staphylococcus aureus, E. coli, Pseudomonas, etc. So it has bactericidal effect on other bacteria also. Look at this diagram if it makes any sense to you. In the last video we saw isoniazid. It is going to inhibit the synthesis of mycolic acid which is there in the cell wall. So again it is bactericidal isoniazid. Now in this video we want to focus on rifampicin. It is going to bind to the beta subunit of the DNA dependent RNA polymerase of the bacteria and hence it will prevent the synthesis of RNA. Okay. It will prevent RNA synthesis and protein synthesis. So obviously the bacteria will die. So now let's move on to the next uh, thing here, re resistance. So basically the resistance is developed because of mutation in the gene which reduces the affinity of the bacteria to the drug. Okay. Wake up if you are sleeping. What are we currently studying? Rifampicin or rifampin. We saw that it is uh, active against almost all bacteria, intracellular, extracellular and even the ones which are in the caseous necrosis. So it is called as a sterilizing agent. It should be given 10 mg per kg or 600 mg per day. Okay, then we saw the mechanism of action. It is going to inhibit the uh, synthesis of RNA by binding to the DNA dependent RNA polymerase of the bacteria. It is also active against a lot of other bacteria. Now let us move on to the pharmacokinetics, PK of the of rifampin. It is given orally. You already saw the capsule, right? In the last, uh, in the introduction you have seen this. So it is obviously given orally, correct? So it is given orally. It is rapidly absorbed from the GI tract. Obviously that is why it is given. But the presence of food reduces the absorption. Rifampin, uh, you should give on empty stomach. The presence of food reduces its absorption. It is distributed widely, obviously, 
and it can even enter cell, kill intracellular, extracellular, caseous masses, cavities, placenta also it crosses. It crosses the meninges also but it is pumped out quickly, okay. It is metabolized in the liver, obviously. It is metabolized in the liver, excreted in urine you can say but one extra thing that is there here is, um, it is again acetylated only in the liver and it is excreted in bile also. Rifampin is excreted in bile also. It enters enterohepatic recycling because it is there in bile it goes back to uh, the liver. Enterohepatic recycling happens. Okay. So the rest of the drug obviously is excreted in urine. What happened? Okay. rest of the drug is excreted in urine. The T half is around 2 to 5 hours. Isoniazid was 1 to 3 hours. This one is 2 to 5 hours. Okay. Almost everything is same. Hours only. So now what did you understand so far in the pharmacokinetics of rifampin? It is well absorbed orally and uh, food decreases the rifampicin absorption. So it should be taken on empty stomach. It is widely distributed in the body. It penetrates intracellulary. It enters the tubular cavities, caseous masses. It can even cross placenta. It can cross meninges but it is pumped out. It is metabolized in liver to an active deacetylated metabolite. Okay, just look at this again. So it is becoming active in form, deacetylated, deacetylated form, okay, in the liver. Okay, in the liver it's getting activated, but to a deacetylated metabolite. Uh, and this is excreted in bile and this undergoes enterohepatic circulation. Okay. Any confusion here? Hope this is clear for you. Let's move on now. How much more is that? Uses of rifampin, adverse effects of rifampicin and drug interactions. Only this much is left. So let's look off quickly. Obviously rifampicin is used in tuberculosis. You know that to treat tuberculosis it is used. It's used along with um, isoniazid and uh, etambutol and what is the other one? Pyrazinamide. Okay, HRZE. You should also tell the dose and all that. It is also used to treat leprosy. You have seen all this leprosy in leprosy chapter, anti-leprosy drugs. Here you have seen rifampin, anti-tubercular drugs like etho, ethoyonamide and rifampin. At least rifampin you remember can treat leprosy. Okay. You know that it is active, rifampicin is active against um, Neisseria meningitidis and Haemophilus influenzae. So you can give uh, rifampin to tr as a prophylaxis for meningococcal and haemophilus influenza meningitis. Okay. How much you give? Again, same thing, 600 mg only for adults. <coughs> it's not clear, very clear here. We are moving on. Staphylococcus aureus, if there is any um, uh, infection, you can give rifampicin along with beta-lactam antibodies that you should not forget. It is along with. Don't give only rifampicin, it is along with, in a combination with beta-lactam antibodies, you can give rifampicin. Then brucellosis, this diagram represents brucellosis to treat brucellosis also in combination with doxycycline. <coughs> doxycycline, you can give rifampicin. It's actually drug of choice it seems. Rifampicin plus doxycycline is drug of choice for treatment of brucellosis. That's nice. So we are done with the uses of rifampin. What in all you understood? Tuberculosis, leprosy, meningitis, brucellosis, staphylococcus aureus, infection. All these can give rifampicin. Correct? No? Very good. Still what in all is left in uh, rifampin? Adverse drug reaction we have to look at. And drug interaction. Not very difficult. Let's finish it. Wait. Adverse drug reaction of um, rifampin, it's not very difficult, okay, same hepatitis only, what you have seen in uh, isoniazid, same rifampicin, if there is hepatotoxicity, discontinue rifampin, same thing, it is dose related, same, 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 absolutely same, and it will be more in people who are alcoholics, elderly patients, same thing. Flu-like syndrome with fever, chills, headache, fever we saw in that one also, right, fever also we saw in that one, arthralgia we saw. Myalgia, we saw, same thing, joint pain. Then GI disturbances such as nausea, vomiting, abdominal discomfort, same thing we have seen. Skin rashes, pruritus, that is itching, flushing can happen. The main thing about rifampin you should know, all the body fluids will become orange red, okay, but it is harmless, like urine will be red, 
Tears will be red. Saliva will be red. Sweat will be red. God, can you imagine that sweat will be red? Sputum also. So tell the patient not to get so scared if it, he starts seeing red urine and all that. It's not blood. And uh, it is just a side effect of this tablet. Hence, probably they are using this orange capsule for it. Did you notice that uh, they are using orange capsule? See, probably to indicate to the patient that it will become orange. Don't worry. So we are done with the adverse drug reactions of um, rifampin. <clears throat> Last slide is uh, drug interactions. It is an enzyme inducer, so it will reduce the plasma levels of other drugs, right? So oral or anticoagulants means warfarin, etc. All of their dosage will uh, the all of their uh, plasma levels will become less. Okay, even um, uh, protease inhibitors, HIV protease inhibitors, NNRTIs, all of these, even oral contraceptive levels will become less. So you should give higher dose of oral contraceptive pill. Rifampicin induces its own metabolism. So I just put this image, you know. So as such an idiotic drug, it induces its own metabolism. Okay. So rifampin is an enzyme inducer. It will reduce the level of oral contraceptive pills, warfarin, uh, HIV, PIs, NNRTIs, everything. Okay. Even antibiotic drugs uh, dose will reduce. So that's all about uh, rifampin. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take a silent recap. It's first line anti-TB drug, okay, amongst those four. It can kill the caseous bacilli. It's called sterilizing agent. Okay, so this is not a very silent review. Mechanism of action inhibits RNA synthesis. It's bactericidal. It kills other types of bacteria also like um, Staphylococcus aureus, Neisseria meningitis, Haemophilus influenzae, Pseudomonas, E. coli, wow. But resistance can develop to rifampin. Okay. Pharmacokinetics, the main thing is here is uh, it is excreted in bile, it enters enterohepatic, it undergoes enterohepatic recycling. Rifampin, the person should take on empty stomach because food reduces its absorption. Okay. So enterohepatic circulation, remember rifampin, empty stomach, you should take rifampin. And uh, uses of rifampin are uh, against tuberculosis, leprosy, meningitis, brucellosis, etc. It's actually drug of choice along with doxycycline for the treatment of brucellosis. Rifampin adverse drug effects, same thing like hepatitis, fever, muscle, GI disturbances, nausea, vomiting, etc. Skin rashes, itching, flushing, that's kind of uh, common that you will write for everything. Main thing is all the body fluids, uh, body secretions will become orange, which is harmless. Drug interactions, it is an enzyme inducer. Rifampicin is an enzyme inducer. It reduces the levels of all other drugs like oral contraceptives, warfarin, HIV, protease inhibitors, NNRTIs, etc. Even the anti-diabetic drugs, uh, their uh, level comes down, plasma level. So you should make sure that the, you are giving higher dose along with rifampin. Rifampin induces its own metabolism also. So that's all for now. We completed rifampin. We have finished isoniazid. Next video we will cover uh, remaining drugs. Okay. Come back. Bye-bye.